Well, here we are at the last part of a pretty complicated buffer problem. With it, we're starting with our citric acid. This is an organic acid that a lot of plants make. Um, really, its official name sh shouldn't be citric acid because it has three carbons. In fact, its official name would be based on propane since it has three carbons. So we've got propane, and notice it has two alcohols on it. So we've got a two hydroxy propane. So it's a propane with two hydroxies, two alcohols. And then we've got a series of three acids tossed in too. So we've got to end up indicating that it's one, two, three, tri carboxylic acid, and you can see why everybody really just calls it citric acid. So let's get back to the problem. Here we'll switch to it. And again, we've got our alcohol that's involved in this. And then we've got our three COOHs. Each one of these, an acid that's going to come off the molecule. So the original acid, where we just have one proton leave, has a Ka of 7.4 times 10 to the negative 4. It's a weak acid, but it's, uh, you know, it's actually more acidic than acetic acid. Now, we can take that Ka, as we've done already, and find its pKa, 3.13. And if we want to get rid of the second hydrogen, that pK, of course, is going to be higher because it's tougher to get rid of that second proton. And finally, the third proton, where you're left with just sodium, is all around here. Citric acid, I mentioned, as I mentioned before, is used a lot in flavorings. It's found naturally in lemons, and, and they use it in fruit drinks. Let me quickly switch to uh, this juices. Uh, so citric acid is really pretty common. It provides a lot of the tartness, the acidic part. And it's not unusual to have a half a gram in a day of citric acid. I'm sure you've consumed quite a bit of citric acid if you've eaten any lemons or oranges or drink or drop, drank pops. Like here is... Something went wrong. Please try again. Ignore that. Uh, here's a case where we have 7-Up and if you look at its ingredients, it's got water, some sugar, uh, and then citric acid, and then potassium is a spectator ion, and a citrate. So it's been buffered. This 7-Up is buffered uh, so that uh, its pH will be pretty stable. And that's what this is all about. Let's get back to the problem. The problem is... How many moles of conjugate base would be needed to be mixed with 0.15 moles of acid? So we're starting off with citric acid. Now, if we're making a buffer of citric acid, we would have to mix it, here's the HA, with its conjugate base, where it's missing one of the hydrogens. And here you can see this hydrogen has been donated, and we've got this spectator sodium. So we've got a mixture of the two. Now, the K pKa is, in effect, the pH that you're going to get if you have equal amounts of the acid and its conjugate base. Now, notice we want a pH of 4. So we want to end up having it more basic when the, than if you have equal amounts of both. In fact, if we realize now we're going to need more sodium citrate, we're going to have to add some extra base to make this solution have a pH of greater than 3.13, which 4 is. So remember this, the pKa really is the pH of an equal mixture of the acid and its conjugate base. They really should give it a pKa-B. Uh, measurement. So if we had equal amounts of citric and citrate, notice our naming for organic acids, we just say acid, and then its conjugate base is called the 8. That's something worth remembering. I'll make reading AP questions easier. The 8 is the conjugate base of the acid, acidate. Well, how are we going to solve this? We want to make a pH of 4. Well, generally, 
The best way to do this is to, I think, use the Henderson-Hasselbach equation, and it's on the AP exam. It's pretty easy to remember. pH, that's what you want. This is going to be 4. You've got the pKa already, and then you take the logarithm, add it, of the conjugate base. It's, you know, the Bach, Henderson Hasselbach, I think the B indicating that the base is on top and the acid on the bottom. Now these could be concentrations or these could be moles. So we've got really all the information we need to get a pH of four. We've got the pKa, we've got the amount of acid, 0.15 moles, and as I said, you can use moles or molarity here, just be consistent, and we can put that in the equation. Here's the equation, and it's a tougher one to solve. If I was going to solve this, I would realize that my conjugate base is going to have to be bigger than 0.15 because we want a positive log to push this up to 4. In fact, I may end up changing this question to make this 4.13, and then you'd know you need 10 times more conjugate base than acid, easier to solve, and t uh, this over this is going to end up being 10, which is 1. Let's do this on a TI. I'll get my calculator up in a second. This can be solved using algebra. You'd have to worry. You'd do a little subtraction here on both sides and then do 10 raised to the <laughs> this value. But I'm going to do this using a, our, I'm going to move up here to numeric solver to solve this. So I'm just going to put in 4 and then this is an easy enough equation to put in. 3.13 is going to be the pKa of the acid plus then we've got a logarithm, and I'm going to use parentheses to make sure everything works out right. Whoops, the logarithm had its parentheses already. So I'm just going to use, instead of A, I'll use X. That way I can just type in 1 rather than alpha A. And then divide that by the concentration, or the amount, in this case, of the acid. We're going to find out how much base we're going to add, conjugate base, to get this pH from 3.13 up to 4. So we know we're going to have a positive value. And I'll solve for this x. In fact, that's going to be moving you know, close to 1 as you figure out the answer if your logarithm values are good. So I'm going to enter this. I check my equation because it's easy to write these things wrong. 4, 3.13, log of my base. And again, you've Whenever you do a, con a buffer problem, you've got to think of the conjugate base that matches the acid. Acid, base. And we'll solve for this. Oops. <laughs> I'll solve. I solved it before. And you can see it's 1.11. So the amount of base we would add is going to be 1.11. I'll write that down right now. I'll get my text. And I'll say 1.1 moles. We didn't have to worry about, I'll use three significant figures. And this setup would be all that you would need to show on a FRQ, indicating that you're going to do this calculation. And it makes sense. We're going to have to add quite a bit of base to get the, if they were equal, 3.313, if we had both 0.15 moles of acid and its conjugate base mixed in the solution we would end up having a pH of 313. But we're going to dump in a lot more base to get that pH up to 4. So it's not quite as acid. This is going to be a buffered solution. It's going to be quite stable. You could use this to standardize a pH probe. Now, if you are comfortable with the Henderson-Hasselbach, this is a good way of solving it. But you could also solve it using the standard arrangement without logs. We've taken our Ka equilibrium. In fact, this is the same really as this, except one with the logarithm version, especially if you're good with your logs, you'd understand how this could be derived. We want to know 
how much of our conjugate base. We're solving for our conjugate base. This is our acid, the citric acid. This is our eight version of that, the conjugate base. And this is the desired H plus, the acidity level. And you can just put the numbers in. One times 10 to the negative four, which is our desired pH. You wouldn't need a calculator for that. We know the Ka of the acid, that's given in the, in the problem, 7.42 times 10 to the negative 4, which if you took the negative log of, you get 3.13. I remember this equation because I see this Ka that indicates the acid is on the top, so I put the 0.15 here. You get the original equation on the AP exam, and you also get this version of the henderson hasselbach well, solving this, you could use a calculator, but uh, let's make it a little bit easier because we know this 10 to the negative 4 and 10 to the negative 4 are going to cancel out. That'll save us from having to put a lot of stuff in a calculator the times e. Use your math to help you. And now, of course, we can switch this, multiply the conjugate base by both sides, and realize that the amount of conjugate base is going to be 7.42 times 0.15. Let's pull the calculator out and see if we get the same answer. I'm going to leave this and quit. And I'll do this calculation. I'll take 7.42. And we'll see if this is as good as the henderson hasselbach time is the 0.15, uh, which is our acid concentration, or acid moles, I should say. Let's see if we get 1.11. Ah, we did. 1.11 moles of, and of course, this is going to be the conjugate base, which is the original sodium citrate. When you do your buffer problems, you have to have the acid and then the base associated with this. So now you know how you can make some 7-up with a pH of 4 if you use equal amounts of citric acid, or not equal amounts, 0.15 moles of citric acid and 1.11 moles, a ton of its conjugate base. The actual pH of 7-up is about 3.2. So you don't quite have as much potassium citrate. All right, buffer problems. Look again. Let's look at our henderson hasselbach uh, You know, we've got quite a few numbers here. We've got a pH, we've got a pKa, and you've got a acid and the conjugate base. Just make sure you get the numbers together right. And then you've got a calculator to solve this. And also you can make sense of it too. You could say, I know to get a higher pH, a more basic solution, I add more conjugate base. So you should be aware of how this problem works. You shouldn't just plug into an equation. You should understand why and how an equation works. Okay, that's D, one of the toughest problems you can have in an AP exam where you actually make up a buffered solution using an acid and its conjugate.